Hello everybody, hope you are enjoying your week. Alexandre Belmar and Olivier Danjou back with you. This week we'll show you and explain you how to set up and optimize the configuration of a Windows computer to make it work better with a screen reader like JAWS or NVDA. Probably some of you have purchased a computer and were, oh, uh, the computer is not fully optimized to use with my JAWS or NVDA screen reader. So this week, learn how to set it up. Enjoy! You recently purchased a new computer and you want to set it up to make sure it is fully accessible and fully working with your screen readers. We'll be with you today to teach you how to set up Windows to improve the accessibility. So we are actually running the latest version of Windows 10, which is the fall creator version when we are recording this podcast. So we are running this uh, version on 64-bit on a Kangaroo. This is a computer available here at Log. So we just reset to factory one of these Kangaroos. So we'll be with you to show you how to configure the computer. NVDA is now installed on the computer and uh, just for the demo, if you need some assistance installing NVDA, you'll be able to contact us, we can assist with that, or you can also use Windows Narrator by pressing Ctrl Windows Enter. After launching Narrator, you'll be able to install by yourself NVDA. By the way, we skipped the tutorial because first, when launching a new computer, there is a tutorial asking to select the language, to connect to the Wi-Fi, selecting regions, setting up confidentiality settings. So there is a setup that you need to complete. We completed this for you. And like if the computer is already set up, but we'll show you how to connect to Wi-Fi. So first of all, I think we'll be ready to go and to connect to the Wi-Fi. I'm with Olivier. Hi, Olivier. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Fine, and you? I'm doing very well. So, would you like to show us how to connect to the Wi-Fi network? I think the best way will be to go into the settings or to open the Windows context menu. Yeah, well, we're going to access the settings menu by pressing Windows I and I will turn on the command key so you can hear exactly what I'm doing. Win settings, settings window, search box, find a setting edit blank so i pressed windows i to open the settings now i'm going to tab tab list system one of 13 right arrow devices right arrow phone three right arrow network and internet four of 13 always hit enter in the settings enter settings window status search box tab list status one of nine down arrow WiFi not selected two of nine. Select an item, always enter. Enter. WiFi. Selected. Tab. WiFi toggle button pressed. Tab. Show available networks link. Before everything, before you click on show available networks, uh, make sure that the Wi-Fi button is pressed because if it's not, it's mean that the Wi-Fi card is not turned on so you'll need to press the space to activate this button if it's not yeah in this case you need to press space but when an item has multiple groups in the settings like for example in the wi-fi menu you have status wi-fi and you have other options then you need to press enter to select one so i'm going to click on show available network enter network connections window tab List. Famil Danjo 5 secured signal 3 out of 4 bars not selected 1 of 2. So here you have two networks available. To select the network, you press enter if it's selected. Or you can move with the arrow keys. In this case, the network that I want is selected. Enter. Selected. Tab. Connect automatically. Checkbox checked. Tab. Connect button. Space. Checking network requirements button 
Enter the network security key and it protected Alt F8 to show past star. Star. So star, now entering the password? Star. 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 Enter. Verifying and connecting. Cancel button. Then processing. Pamil Danjo connected. Secured signal 4 out of 4 bars. Alright, so now the Wi-Fi is connected and so we'll be ready to go. Next thing that we'll like to show you is how to place on the desktop icons to open this PC, to open your user account as well as the control panel because the control panel is no longer available through the Windows context menu since Windows Creator and File Creator. Just to let our users know when we're speaking about the Windows context menu we're speaking about when you press Windows X. F. Context menu. This menu. Apps and features F. Mobility center B. Power options O. Event viewer V. For system those who are, who are seeing, it's the same thing as right clicking on the start menu button. Before the creator's update of Windows 10, there were a control panel option there, but as Alex told it, there's no longer a control panel option available. Settings. So I press Set escape. Now I'm already in the settings, so I'm going to backspace. Settings window. Search box. Find a setting edit. Tab list. System 1 of 13. Now we need to go into personalization. Right arrow. Right arrow. Right arrow. Network and enter. Right arrow. Always Personalization use five of thirteen. Left and right arrow to move into the setting options because if you use up or down arrows, you may miss some options because it's presented in a grid. Enter. Settings window. Background. Search box. Find a setting edit. Tab. List. Background one of six. Down arrow. Colors not selected so two of six. Down arrowing. Down arrow. And we'll select. Lock screen theme. not select. Down arrow. Themes not selected four of six. Enter. Pressing enter. Themes. Selected. Tab. Background signature zero one button. Tab. Color default blue button. Tab. And then. Sounds windows default all button. He's now tapping until he'll Tab. find. The Mouse cursor windows default button. Option to Tab. arrange desktop Link. icon. Tab. List. Microsoft Signature 1 Im Tab. Get more themes link. Tab. Desktop icon settings link. There we go, enter. Enter. Desktop icon settings dialog. Desktop icons property page. Desktop icons grouping. Computer checkbox not checked alt plus M. Okay, so this icon will put a this PC icon on the desktop. Space. Checked. Down arrow. Users files checkbox not checked alt plus U. So essentially when you set up your computer you have to give a name to your account. So in this case when I set up this computer I typed Canadian log. So if this checkbox is checked I will have a Canadian log icon on the desktop. Space. Checked. Down arrow. Network checkbox not checked alt plus n. This one is useful if you have a storage drive on in your network or if you're sharing data between computer on your network. So for a regular user you'll not have to check this one except in particular cases. So maybe you can go down. Down arrow. Recycle bin checkbox checked alt plus r. The recycle bin which is already checked. Down arrow. Control panel checkbox not checked alt plus o. The control panel icon which we're going to check. Space. Checked. Down arrow. Computer checkbox checked alt plus m. And now back to the beginning. Now I have to tab until I find the OK button. Tab. Desktop icons list. Tab. Change icon. Tab. Restore default. Tab. Allow themes to change desktop icons. Tab. OK button. Settings. Settings window. Desktop icon settings link. And speaking of the recycle bin, while we are there, in Windows 7 and earlier versions, you had a confirmation when you were about to delete a file. Are you sure you want to delete this file? 
since Windows 8.1, I don't know if it was the case for Windows 8 or not, but I know for sure Windows 8.1 behaves that way. Since Windows 8.1 and Windows 10, when you delete a file, it's instantly deleted. So in order to fix that, we need to go into the Recycle Bins properties. Folder view list. R. Recycle bin 3 of 5. Then Alt Enter. Alt. Recycle bin properties dialog. General prop. Then we need to type until we hear something like show confirmation when deleting. Tab. Settings for selected location group. Tab. Maximum size. Tab. Display delete confirmation dialog checkbox not checked Alt plus D. Space. Checked. Tab. OK button. Desktop list. Now when deleting an item you'll have a confirmation before it's going to the recycle bin. So if you press delete by accident you'll be prompt with a confirmation. Maybe now let's go ahead and open the control panel. We'll show you a couple of things there. Control panel 4 of 5. Enter. Control panel. Search box edit search control panel. Blank. So I will down arrow. Down arrow. Blank. Category button browse control panel items by category or view a complete list of all items. So I'll press enter on that. Context menu. Down arrow. Category check C. Down arrow. Large icons L. So we have large icons. Down arrow. Small icons S. Small icons. So it depends if you have vision or not. If you are a low vision user, you might want to change it to large icon. However, if you can see, definitely click on small icons. Enter all control panel items. But administrative for tools a link configure administrative user, settings for your computer. It's going to be the exact same thing if you choose large or small. So if you want a better result in the display, you should select large, but it's going to be the exact same thing, whatever you choose. Now, maybe you can go into the power management options. P. Phone and modem link. P. Power options link conserve energy or maximize performance by choosing how your computer manages power. Control panel home link. So I just pressed enter. Now I'm going to tab. Choose what the power buttons do link. Choose what the power buttons do. Maybe we could go there first as we will have options to change there. I think it's a great idea, yes. Space. Power options window. Change settings that are currently unavailable link. We're gonna click on this right now. Unavailable. And now I'm going to tab. When I press the power button on battery, combo box sleep collapsed. That's a very bad thing, because when I press the power button on battery, sleep. That's mean that if you got a computer crash or if it's race, in some situation you might be unable to completely close the computer and then restart it. Because the power button will perform the sleep action. So if your computer has a non-removable battery, You'll be stuck. So I'll suggest you to select shutdown. Maybe you can down arrow. Shut down. Perfect. Then press tab. When I press the power button, plugged in, combo box sleep collapsed. Same thing here. So please press down arrow. Shut down. Perfect. Tab. When I press the sleep button on battery, combo box sleep collapsed. That's the right action. When I press the sleep button, plugged in, combo box sleep collapsed. All right. Let's continue. Turn on fast startup. Recommended. Checkbox checked. So what is fast startup? Essentially, when you go to the Windows context menu. Context menu. Sign out I. And you press the, the letter U to go to shut down or sign out. And when you click the shut down option. Sleep S. Shut down U. Windows doesn't shut down completely. And it can affect you if you're using a demo version of JAWS in the sense that when you will turn on your computer since Windows was not completely shut down JAWS will remember oh I got run in 40 minutes demo mode so the computer needs to be restarted so fast startup doesn't 
fully shut down the computer. So I don't like to have that on, so I'm going to turn it off. But first I will escape. Shut down or sign out submit. System settings. Turn on fast startup. Recommended. Checkbox checked. Space. Not checked. And if I tab, we will have a little explanation. Power options window. This helps start your PC faster after shutdown. Restart isn't affected. Learn more. Learn more link. I can't say that I see a big difference. Yes, this is longer to start, but at least it shuts down completely when I tell it to shut down. The major difference if the fast startup is enabled or not is for computer that are having an whole set of drive, like not an SSD drive, but a, a drive that turn around and you have like uh, it need to read the entire drive or to search for the information it's going to be a longer process to start the entire computer so this checkbox can improve the startup of computers with old hard drive like this and by the way if fast startup is turned on if you completely shut down the computer we'll see a bit later that we'll go ahead and turn on the Windows startup sound, you will not be able to hear it in some situations. So now I will tab to save the changes. Sleep checkbox checked. Power options window. Show in power menu. Lock checkbox checked. Power options window. Show in account picture menu. Save changes button. Space. Pressed. Control panel home link. Maybe you can go back into the home of the control panel by pressing enter. Space. And, or yes, yeah, Administrative space, tools okay. link configure administrative and maybe settings. Maybe let's go ahead and turn on the Windows boot sound. So we'll search for sound by typing SO. Oh. Sound link configure your audio devices or change the sound scheme for your computer. Pressing enter. Sound dialog. Playback. Now I'll press Control Tab. Recording property page. Again. Sounds property page. A sound theme is a set of sounds Tab. applied. Save as. Tab button. again. Program events. Treat. Tab Play again. Windows Startup sound checkbox not go. checked. Space. Checked. OK button. Space. All control panel items. Sound link configure your audio devices or. And now when we will restart the computer, we will have the Windows 7 booting sound. Let's do it. Context menu. Sign out I. Sleep. Shut down you. Restart R. Un Computer is now restarting. We'll be right back when it's going to be back on. Loading NVDA. Taskbar. Here it is. When you want to install a program in Windows, you have a user account control that's asking you hey there is an app that want to make changes do you want to allow it so i'm going to show it to you and then i'm going to show you how to turn it off context unknown secure desktop from there you need to press alt y user to account validate. control dialog yeah, user account control do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device Windows PowerShell Verified Publisher, Microsoft Windows Show More D. So you can press Alt-Y or click Yes. In this case, I'm going to hit No. The cursor is already on No, so I'll press Enter. Unknown. I suggest to turn off the UEC because if you're asking for support to a technician or if you're calling us, it might be very difficult for a person who will take remote of the computer to perform some tasks on it if the UEC is not turned off. So let's go ahead and turn it off. So we are going to return into the control panel. Folder view list. Kena dialog not C. Control panel 4 of 5. So Windows D, All control, the panel, control panel and enter. Administrative tools link configure administ... So now we need to find user account. So you... You. User accounts link change user account settings and passwords for people who share this computer. Okay, enter. Make changes to my account in PC settings link. So now we need to tab until we find change user account control settings. Change your account name link. 
Change your account type link. Manage another account link. Change user account control settings link. Sp unknown. User Pressing account control bar? settings. Tell me more about user account control settings. Tell me more about user account control settings link. Tab. Notification level. Slider 67. So the default value is 67, but to turn it off completely, down arrow twice. Zero. Okay, and then we need to press OK. OK button. We will have a final UAC. Sp secure desktop. This time I will use yes. user account control dialog user account yes button okay. User accounts. Change and user now account. if I return into the Windows PowerShell where I was to make the demo. Context menu. Unknown. Windows PowerShell terminal. Blank. Windows PowerShell. Copyright. C. No more user account control notification. Now we are going to show you how to turn off the auto sleep of the computer. So to do that, we're going to go in the control panel. Windows plus D. This PC 2 of 5. C. Control panel 4 of 5. Enter. All control panel items. Administrative tools link configure administrative. C we need to return into the power option. P. Phone and mo P. Power options link. Enter. Control panel home link. No, we'll tab. Tab. Choose what the power buttons do link. Choose what the power buttons do. Tab. Create a power plan link. Create a power plan. Tab. Change when the computer sleeps link. Change when the computer sleeps. Here. Space. Power options window. Change advanced power settings link. Alt plus C. Alt plus C. Okay, so now we will need to tab a lot to find the options of the sleep. Tap. tap, tap. Tap, tab. Put the computer to sleep. On battery. Combo box 4 minutes collapsed. So we're going to down arrow. Down arrow. 5 minutes. Down. Or you also down arrow. have the possibility four to hours. just press and to select never. Down arrow. 5 hours. Down arrow. Never. Never. There we are. Tab. Put the computer to sleep. Plugged in. Combo box 10 minutes collapsed. Can you press and? Yeah, sure I can. And. Never. Here we go. Okay. Now we have. Tab. Power options window. Change advanced power settings link alt plus C alt plus C. We can change advanced power settings. However, I think you just go too faster when pressing tab. I'll just press back tab a couple of times because we missed the option about the uh, screensaver. Shift plus tab. Shift plus tab. Let me let me Put show you. Put the computer you. to sleep. Shift plus tab. Turn off the display. Plugged in. Combo box. Ten minutes collapse. Shift plus there tab. There we go. Turn off the display. On battery. Combo box four minutes collapsed. So I'll select never for this one too by pressing end. End. Never. Tab. Tab again. Turn off the display. Plugged in. Combo box ten minutes collapsed. And end. Never. Same thing here. So now you can go ahead and click on save settings. T tab. Save changes button. Space. Pressed. Here we go for the Control save changes. Control panel home link. Now we can um, go to the language options. Sure, we can do this. So let's open Windows setting. Alt desktop list. Windows plus uh, settings. So Windows settings I. window. Search box tab. List. System right arrow. Device right arrow. Phone three right arrow. Network and inch right arrow. Personal is it right arrow. App 6 of 13, right arrow. Account, right arrow. Time and language 8 of 13. Enter. Settings window. Date tab. List. Date and time 1 of 3. Down arrow. Down arrow. Region and language not selected 2 of 3. Enter. Enter. Region and language. Selected. Tab. Windows and apps might use your country or region to give you local content combo box Canada collapsed. Tab. Add a language button. So here you have a button to add a language. So say for example, I want to switch the computer to French Canadian. I could click on that and 
download the appropriate language pack. Tab. However, we are looking to change English, the keyboard Canada. for language a more pack available, not selected, collapsed keyboard one of here. two. So now the cursor is on English Canada. It said that the language pack is available, but the language of the computer is English US. So we need to down arrow. Down arrow. English, United States, Windows display language not selected, collapse two of two. Selected by pressing enter. Enter. Selected expanded. Tab. Set as default button. Okay, we have a button to set it as default. Tab. Options button. Options, there we go. Space. English, United States. Home button. Tab. Settings link. Tab. Add a keyboard button. So here we can add a keyboard layout. Let's say I want. I would want to add French Canadian as keyboard layout. I could click on that and I would have all of the keyboard layouts available. So maybe Tab. because we are using List. the computer Canadian in... multilingual standard QWERTY not selected collapsed one of one. Here's the keyboard, yes. So maybe because we are using the keyboard in English US, now we are using the Canadian multilingual. Maybe let's go ahead and add an English US keyboard, which is the keyboard we recommend for those who are English speakers. Shift plus tab. Add a keyboard button. Space. Pop up window. List. English. India. Not selected. Two of 95. Down arrow. Irish 3 of 95, down arrow. Scottish Gaelic 4 of 95, down arrow. United Kingdom 5 of, down oh. arrow. United States Dvorak 6 of 95, down Not arrow. United States Dvorak for left hand 7 of 95, down arrow. United States Dvorak for right hand, down arrow. United States International 9 of 9, down arrow. US 10 of 95. There we go. Enter. Add a keyboard button. Now if we tab, tab, list, Canadian multilingual standard QWERTY not selected collapsed one of two, down arrow, US QWERTY not selected collapsed two of two, should be fine, selected, we press enter, enter, selected expanded, tab, remove button, we can remove it if we want, tab, get help link, tab, Home button. And to switch between keyboards, press Control Shift. I think we will need to sign back in in order for this to apply. Yes, however, be careful. Control Shift allows you to switch between keyboard in the same language. However, if you're using multiple language on the same computer, in this particular case, you can also switch between install language using Alt Shift. So maybe let's go ahead and do you want to sign sign out and then sign back in or do you think it would be appropriate? I, I think it's going to be OK if we leave yeah. it alone. However, uh, please remind that you can use control shift as well as alt shift to toggle between install keyboard. So now we are going to go adjust for best performance. This feature is useful, especially if you have a computer that does not have a lot of resources. In this case, this is the case with the kangaroo. This is not a powerful computer. So we will go to the control panel again. Windows plus D. Control panel 4 of 5. Enter all the control Kangaroo panel is a items. Computer that is fine administrative to use tools for link configure administrative edition. settings for your computer. However, you know, Windows uh, upgrade after upgrades provide a lot of visual things. Let's see, colors, animations, and much more. These kind of visual things can slow down a computer like the Kangaroo. So we are going to go into system, so S, Y. S, Y. Sync center link sync files between your computer, S. System link view informate, enter. Here. Windows logo window. System CPL main window window. Change settings link. So change settings. So we're going to press enter here. Enter. 
System Properties dialog. Computer name property page for um, example, kitchen oh, computer or Mary's computer. True. Full computer name, desktop AF272CK workgroup, workgroup to rename this computer, click change. Windows uses the following information to identify your computer on the network. Computer description, edit alt plus D. We'll blank. talk about this one just a few minutes after. We'll start by changing performance and I'll gonna explain you how to change a computer name that can be a useful thing to do if you're installing some protected software or if you're in a network. So control tab. Hardware property page. Again. Device manager group. Advanced property page you must be logged on as an administrator to make most of these changes. Performance grouping visual effects, processor scheduling, memory usage, and virtual memory. Settings. Button Alt plus S. Okay, so we'll press enter on that. Performance options dialog. Visual effects property page select the settings you want to use for the appearance and performance of Windows on this computer. Let Windows choose what's best for my computer radio button checked Alt plus L. Down arrow. Adjust for best appearance radio button checked Again. Alt plus. Adjust for best performance radio That's button checked Alt plus want. P. So now tab. Tree view. Animate Again. controls and element. OK button. OK. Space. Press. System properties dialog. Advanced property page you and must. Now we will hit OK one more time. User profiles. Start up and environment. Ver OK button. Space. System. Maybe now we can explain why it's useful to change computer's name. So let's do it right now. So I'll click again on the change setting button. So I'll go ahead and press enter right now. Enter. System properties dialog. Computer name property page for example, kitchen computer or Mary's computer. Full computer name, desktop AF272CK workgroup, Work group to rename this computer, click change. Windows uses the following information to identify your computer on the network. Computer description, edit alt plus D. Blank. So here's the computer name that we've just heard, the desktop. We'll go ahead and change this one. NVDA plus tab. If I press NVDA Computer tab, description, edit focus uh, alt I'm plus D. on the computer description, Blank. so I'll press shift tab. Shift plus tab. Tab control. Oops, tab. tab again. Tab. Change. Change. Okay, Button here we go. Plus C. Clicking on change. Computer name slash domain changes dialog full computer name. Desktop AF272 delete. delete. right here. Okay. Blank. And then Selection I'll remove. type kangaroo olivier. K-A-N-G-A-R-O. Kangaroo uh, dash. Yeah, I'll press, a, I'll press dash because dash. space is not accepted. O-L-I-I-E-R. Then pressing tab. tab. More. Tab. Member of grouping. Tab. Okay, we don't Edit. care for this one. Tab. OK button. And I'll go ahead and press OK. Computer name slash domain changes yeah. dialog. The net BIOS Should name be. of the computer is limited to 15 bytes, which is 15 characters in this case. Oh. The net BIOS name will be shortened to Kangaroo Olivi, which may cause Oops. conflicts under net okay. BIOS name resolution. So OK button. What we are hearing right now is that the name is too long. I'll press OK. Com maybe computer in the name future slash we'll domain changes dialog. Change you must again. restart your computer to apply these changes before restarting. Save any open files and close all programs. OK button. And we'll be prompt to restart. This Enter. is what System we're going to do. System properties dialog. Computer name property page. For example, kitchen computer or Mary's computer. Full computer name. Kangaroo Olivier work group. Work group to rename this there we tab. Go. Pressing close button. Tab and then close. Enter. Microsoft Windows dialog. Yeah. You must restart your computer to Perfect. apply these changes before restarting. So restart now. Save any open files and close all programs. Restart now button Alt plus Pressing enter. enter. And the computer will be back on in a couple of minutes. During this time, why changing computer's name? It's only because when doing this, if you install a software, let's say Doxbury, some softwares are grabbing the computer's name to activate. So if you're missing some time activation or would like to remove an activation, same thing for Microsoft Office 365, it's going to be based on computer's name. So it's going to be useful to have a clear or comprehensive computer name 
in the future if you need to manage licenses. And as well for network connection, if you are in a network, want to share some data between your computers, you'll have the possibility to find the appropriate computers on your network by searching using the name you've just set up. The computer is now back on. I'll go into settings by pressing Windows high again because I'd like to show you how to expand the taskbar or the uh, system tree. Settings. Settings right. window. Search box. Pressing tab. List. System 1 of 13. All right. And then I'll Devices use 2 of 13. Right arrow. Phone 3 of the Network and internet. Personalization. App and 6 of we'll Personalization 5 of personalization. 13. Personalization. Settings window. Background. Search box. List. Tab. Background 1 of 6. Then I'll go down. Colors not selected. Lock screen not selected. Themes not selected for start not selected five taskbar not selected six of six. Taskbar, I'll press enter to select. Taskbar selected. Pressing tab. Lock the taskbar toggle button. Press again. Automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. Again. Automatically hide the taskbar in. Again. Use small taskbar buttons. To again. Replace command prompt with Windows. Pop Show badges on taskbar again. buttons. Toggle taskbar location on screen. Combo box bottom. Again. Combine taskbar buttons. Com How do I again. customize taskbar? Again. Select which icons appear on the taskbar link. And then I'll press space here. Space. Select which icons appear on the taskbar. Home button. Tab. Always show all icons in the notification area toggle button not pressed. And I'll press this one by pressing spacebar. Space. Pressed. Here we go. And why doing this if you're using a screen reader that allows you to list system tray icons using, let's say, with JAWS insert F11, you'll have the possibility to make sure and you'll be able to see all icons when pressing insert F11, not just a part of the icons available there. So pressing Alt F4 to close this one. Desktop list. Kana dialog not selected one of five. Now we are going to uh, go ahead and show the file extension. So, I will go into my downloads folder by pressing Windows E to bring up file the explorer file explorer window. Tree view D. Downloads row tree view. Level two downloads collapsed four of nine. Items view list. Remote two point one not selected one of one. And I have a file which is called remote two point one, but it doesn't tell me if it's a um, file dot exe file dot docs. So how do we change that? And well, before explaining this, if you don't see the files extensions, you can be confused between files and folders. Yes. So we're going to go into the control panel. Folder view list. Kana dialog. See. Control panel. All control okay, panel now items. Okay, we need to type Administrator F. To F. File Explorer Options link. File customer. Explorer Options. There file we go. Explorer Options dialog. General property page clear file explorer history. Open file explorer 2. Combo box quick access collapsed. Okay, so open file explorer to quick access. So by default, when it opens the file explorer, you don't have access to your hard drives or say you put a USB stick, you can't access it from there. So what I want it to do is when I press Windows E, I want it to open in this PC. So I will down arrow. This PC. And Windows so, E is the command to open the Windows Explorer. So now we'll press Control Tab. View property page. You can apply this view, such tab as details or icons, settings. to all advanced settings, tree view. Level 0 files and fold. I will down arrow a couple of times. Always show icons. Always display file. Display file. So display the level 1 hidden files and folders expanded 6 of 21. Don't show hidden files, folders, or drives on radio button selected checked. So I will turn this off. Space. 
You'll need to go down to be able to turn this off because two options are available. And to turn it on, you'll just have the possibility to click on the option that is currently set to off. Show hidden files, folders, and drives off radio button selected not checked. Space. Show hidden files, folders, and drives on. So what it does, basically, let's say you want to modify uh, some files into JAWS that are located in your users folder. These files are located into a folder called app data. And by default, this folder is hidden. So if we continue to down arrow. Hide empty drives on checkbox selected checked. So I think, Alex, you recommend to uncheck it, right? Yes. What it does? Yes, because if you leave this checked, if you insert an empty USB stick in your computer, as well as an SD card, if the drive is empty, you'll not be able to see it in this PC screen. Space. Hide empty drives off. Hide extensions for known file types on checkbox selected checked. That's what we want to uncheck. Space. Hide extensions for known file types off. And we have other options as well, but we're not going to go through. Except that maybe a, a one that is on by default that I would suggest you to leave on. Hide folder merge conflicts on checkbox nope, selected checked. One. Hide protected operating system files. Recommended. On checkbox selected checked this one because yeah. if you check this or if you uncheck this it will allow you to see all of the files of the computer and if you delete one by mistake you might damage your operating system but don't worry because if you do it by accident you will hear this space warning dialog you have chosen to display protected operating system files files labeled system and hidden in file explorer these files are required to start and run Windows. Deleting or editing them can make your computer inoperable. Are you sure you want to display these files? No button Alt plus N. And you just have to hit no at this point. Or if you're really sure, go ahead and hit yes. Sp file Explorer options dialog. In some situation, it may be uh, interesting to uncheck this, especially if you are a technician or if you need to perform some uh, complex action inside the system. So I will tab until OK. Restore to OK button. Space. All control panel items. And we are back into control panel. Maybe you can now close this one and come back to your downloads folder. Yeah. Desktop list. Control. Downloads. Ro downloads window. Items view list. Remote 2.1 dot and the add-on not selected one of one. So this is an NVDA add-on file, which is um, an extension to that I added to NVDA. The next step will be to put the display in details mode. So you'll have only one column when so navigating into the file explorer. So you'll be able to only use up and down arrow. And if you need some detail about last modified date, you'll be able to grab this information by just using the right arrow and go on your right. So I'll show you how to do this with this PC screen. So let's press Windows E. This PC window. Tree view. Level 1 this PC expand. Then if I move the cursor with arrow keys. Speak command keys on. Let me turn back this on. I'll use arrow keys. Then going down. Down arrow. Music row 3 column 1 5 of 10. Down arrow. Videos row 4 column 1 7 of 10. You can now observe that we are skipping some icons. So if I go let's see on the right. Right arrow. Devices and drives grouping expanded. Local disk. C. Wow, so uh, many icons presented in a big grid. So first of all, I'll make sure the ribbon is expanded by pressing Ctrl F1. By default, the ribbon is not expanded. So pressing Ctrl F1. Ctrl plus F1. Great. By if the way, if the command keys are not turned on, NVIDIA will say nothing. 
Yes, correct. And if you're using JAWS, notice that JAWS will give you a specific message like ribbon expanded or ribbon collapsed. The NVDA is not giving any kind of message like this. So now I'll go ahead and open the view menu. I'll press Alt. Ribbon property page. Ribbon tabs tab control. Computer tab selected Alt. C. Perfect. Pressing right arrow. Right arrow. View tab selected Alt. V. Here is the view tab. And then, so let me go down. Down arrow. View property page. Panes toolbar. Navigation pane drop down button sub menu. Choose what to display in the navigation pane. Okay, I'll press tab to now go ahead and select the uh, change view. Tab. Preview pane button show or hide the preview. Not this one. Tab. Details pane button show or hide the details pane. Not this one. Alt. Tab. Layout toolbar. Views grouping change your view. Here Views drop down button grid sub menu alt. So change your view. I'll press enter here. Enter. Views list. Tiles. Okay, this is the tile. I'll press down arrow. Down arrow. Extra large icons. I think it's going to be on the right. Right thing. arrow. Large icon. Right arrow. Medium icon. Right arrow. Extra large icon. Right arrow. Uh, not this. Large icons. Oh, right arrow. Medium icons. Okay, going down. Down arrow. Details. Oh, there we go. So it was a line, an extra line down. And on the right, we can now find details. Pressing enter. Enter. Items view list. Devices and drives grouping expanded. And then I press home. Home. Items view list. Folders grouping expanded. 3D objects 1 of 10. And then, if now I go down. Down arrow. Desktop 2 of 10. Again. Down arrow. Documents 3 of 10. Then let's go on our right. Right arrow. Type edit system folder read only row 3 right. type column. Again. Right arrow. Total size edit read only row 3 total size column 3. It's not going to be an information right arrow here. Free space edit read only row 3. For right arrow. But anyways, we're le able to see all the columns that are available into the details view. I'll suggest you to go ahead and select details for this PC as well as into your user folder Op by desktop going list. into the Kena dialog desktop. one of five. Space. I'll open Kena dialog right here because Enter. it's the username on this PC. Kena dialog window. And Tree view. here again, level zero quick access expanded one of two. We'll have to uh, down select arrow. the detail view. I'll Ribbon do property it very page. faster. Ribbon tabs tab control. Right arrow. NVDA. Share tab selected I'll all. Just remove this At one. Home tab selected. That's a bit. View uh, tab selected. View property annoying. page. Preview tab. details paint layout toolbar. Change view. Views enter. list. Medium icons. And then details. Going down. Enter. Items view go. list. And Items after view list. this, one drive 11 of 17. Pressing down arrow again. Pictures 12 of 17. Great. It's now working. Going on the Date right. Date modified, edit 2018. And it's pictures. working. So I'll suggest you to do this for this PC as well as your user account. After that, you should be all set for details view. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to put an icon of Internet Explorer on the desktop. And then we will set it as the default browser. But first, let's go ahead and put it on the desktop. So I will open the file explorer by pressing Windows E. This PC window. Tree view. Then I need to find my C drive. It can be named differently depending of your computer's manufacturers. For example, on my Surface, it is called Windows C. Other computers, it can be called OS C as well as my other computer. It was called OS C. Acer computers do call their drives Acer C. But the C drive on the Kangaroo is called Local Disk C. So I'll press L. L. 
devices I and drives also grouping saw expanded. Windows C, Local disk so many C. or any kind of personalized name can be shown in this PC view. So I'll press enter. Tree view. No. Level 2 local. D I will add P until I hear program files. P. Perf logs 3 of P. Program files 4 of 9. And this one, not this one. Program files, x86, 5 of 9. Really? Take program files. Program files 4 of 9. Items view list. Action switch not select. Now I'll press I until I air Internet Explorer. I. Intel 3 of I. Internet Explorer 4. Items view list. Then I need to find the file called iExplore.exe, so I'll press IEX. I -E -X. I -E shims dll 9 of I. Explore.exe 10 of 11. This one. Now I need to press the Applications key, or if you don't have an Applications key, press Shift F10. Context menu. Up arrow until send to submenu. Property, rename and delete, de create, copy, cut, to send to submenu N. Enter. Send to menu. Bluetooth device B. And then down arrow until desktop create shortcut. Compressed. Desktop. Create shortcut. D. This one. Enter. Internet Explorer window. Items view list. Internet Explorer window. Items view list. Explore.exe 10 of 11. Just before we go ahead and rename it, Alex, I would suggest that we go ahead and put a sound icon on the desktop. A yeah. volume icon. Yeah, that's a great idea. Especially if you're having a computer that doesn't have any physical volume controls on it. Let's say that you don't have external speakers or if you have a laptop where the volume control is difficult to access, a volume control icon on the desktop can be a great idea. And being into the C drive, maybe uh, you can go into the Windows folder, then look for the icon to put on the yeah. desktop. Uh, SNDVol.exe. Yes, correct. Into system 32. So backspace. Items view list. Items view list. Program files 4 of 9. Okay, now I need to add W. W. Windows 9 of 9. Items view list. And be careful because you're in the main system folder here. So if you delete some files by accident, your computer might be damaged. However, I don't think Windows will let you delete system files as easily as that, like crucial system files. Oh, it can. Uh, Sometimes, yes, it can, uh, depending what kind of file you're trying to delete. So in this folder, do not press the delete key. That's the advice we can uh, give you. Yeah, or if you did not enable the delete confirmation in the recycle bin, go ahead and do so before going into the Windows folder. Yes, good idea. So now I will hit SY. System 61 of 100. That's not the folder that I want, so I will hit S once again. S. System 3262 System of 100. System 32, that's the one that we want. Items view list. 040. Now we need to hit SND. So Sierra November Delta until we hear SNDVOL.exe. Or for sound. Items view list. SNDVOL.exe 3170 of 4213. Now we need to applications or shift F10. Context menu. Up arrow until send to. Property rename. Delete. De, create. Short, copy. Cut. De, send to. Restore. Send to submenu. N. Bluetooth device B. Compressed. Desktop. System 32 window. Item. Okay, now we can close up the file explorer. Desktop list. Kana dialog 1 of 7. Back on the desktop. Now we are going to rename the shortcuts. SNDVOL.exe shortcut 7 of 7. So F2. Edit multi-line. 
Selected SND vol.exe shortcut. I will write volume. O L U E. Volume 7 of 7. So if I click it. Volume mixer speakers. USB audio device. Dialog. Slider 48. 57. And I can increase it or decrease it. 43. 47. You don't hear it, but I actually do hear it that it becomes louder or lower as I press the arrow key. Yes, in the recording you'll not hear this. It's not a bug. It's only because actually um, Desktop list. I'm back in Montreal right now to end this podcast. Yes, I started uh, in uh, Clermont, Quebec, and now I'm back in Montreal. So we are in a remote session. And actually, Olivier has the uh, kangaroo in front of him. And then I'm recording the sound of the kangaroo over a remote connection, over a remote session. So even if he go ahead and change the volume on uh, his hand, I'll not be effect for the remote. But it's not a bug. If you're really in front of the computer, you'll be able to control this using let's say up down arrow or page up page down and the after opening the volume icon so now let's rename internet explorer i explore.exe shortcut six of seven f2 again edit multi-line select it i n t e n e t space e x p l o r e r internet explorer six of seven you know what? Before actually go ahead and making it as the default browser, let's open it and change a couple of options. Internet Explorer. Homepage Internet Explorer. Pane. First thing I Internet will do. Internet Explorer 11 Dialog Setup Internet Explorer 11 Internet Explorer Privacy. Inter ask me. Use recommended secure space. Pressed. Internet OK button alt plus space. So if you're prompt Pressed. with a welcome dialogue and a HTTPS. dialogue asking to setting up Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer please welcome. select the Banner. recommended setting using tab to select the appropriate radio button. Then you can use up and down arrow to select the use recommended setting, then press tab and then select OK by pressing enter. So I'll press Ctrl W to close the tab that it just opened. Ctrl F4 is Blank. also working. Collapsed. So now I'll press Alt D. Address and search using Bing and Edit I'll Alt type Plus D. Google dot C. Selected W dot G O G L E dot C A. Selection or removed. You can type any address that you'd like to set up search as combo box your home page in Internet Explorer. So in this case, we have selected Google. So now I will hit Alt and I will go to the Tools menu by pressing right arrow. File submenu Alt plus Edit sub View sub Favorites Tool submenu Alt plus T. I will up arrow until I hear Internet Options. Delete Browse Internet Options O. Enter. Google Doc Internet Options Dialog. General property page change how uh, use current button alt plus c use current for use current page space pressed so when i will hit apply later on and when i will open internet explorer the home page will be the google home page in my case and before you go ahead and close the internet option, let me go and show you how to turn off the smart screen filter. I'll go into the advanced tab, pressing control tab. Security prop. Again. Privacy prop. Again. Content property. Again. Connections property page. Again. Programs property page. Again. Advanced property Here page start takes effect after you restart your computer settings. Reset. Restore press... advanced settings. Tree view. Accelerated okay. graphics. I just press tab and back tab or shift tab to select the tree view. Then I'll find security. S -E. E. Send ID and server names. Send I again. F E C. Security expanded one of okay, one level zero. So security. I'll Allow active down. content from CDS to run. Allow active content to run in files on my computer. Off star checkbox selected. Not check. 
Allow software to run or install even if the signature is invalid off checkbox selected not checked. Uh, Sometimes it might be great to check this one if you are having some issues installing a software. Block like unsecured images with other mixed content off checkbox selected not checked. I think the signature was right for the acquaintances. It was just detected as malicious software by mistake by the Windows Defender. Check for publisher cert. Check for server certificate uh, revenue. Check for signatures on down. Do not down. save encrypted. Empty temporary inter. Enable 64-bit processes for in enable DOM storage. Enable enhanced protected mode star. Enable integrated Windows authentication. Enable native XML HT. Enable Windows Defender Smart. Send. Oh, enable Windows Defender Smart screen on checkbox selected checked. And then I'll remove this one. Space. Why would you enable Windows it? Defender Smart screen off? Sorry. Why would you remove it? I always keep it on. I suggest to remove it because in some situation, the smart screen prevent to execute some files that were downloaded from the internet for no reason. And I think you got some issues formatting a computer and trying to install or launch the executable file of NVDA in the past. Yeah, true. And, and it was probably caused by the smart screen. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was probably. So that's why I just suggest to remove this all the way because sometimes it's prevent to download or to execute file, sorry, previously downloaded from the internet. True, because when I formatted one of your kangaroos when when you were at home, I wasn't able to install NVDA. I had to install it through Nanite, which I might talk about in a future podcast. Yeah, it might be interesting. Uh, but probably Nanite have a different certification compared to NVDA, and that's probably why it uh, went through this way. But uh, that's why I just suggest to remove the smart screen filter because sometimes it's causing a lot of troubles. Maybe now I can go ahead and press tab and select apply. Restore advanced reset. OK button. Cancel button. Apply button. Alt plus A. Perfect. Pressing enter. Unavailable. And I'll press back tab until I'll find OK. Tab control. Cancel but OK button. And then enter. Google Internet Explorer unavailable. Google document. There's last thing that I want to remove on the Internet Explorer. I'd like to go in the tools menu. File submenu. Alt, alt, view, favorite yeah, submenu. Right tools submenu. Right tools. I'll delete browsing. In private browsing. Down. Turn on tracking protection. K. Active X filtering. Fix connection problems. Reopen last browsing, select. add site to apps, a. view downloads, control, pop-up blocker submenu. Pop-up blockers, then pressing right arrow. Pop-up blocker menu. Turn off pop-up blocker B. And I'll select turn off. Pop-up blocker dialog, are you sure you want to turn off Internet Explorer's pop-up blocker? Yes button, I'll plug. Yes, I'm Google sure. Google Internet Explorer. Into. You know, right now, hats are shown many different ways especially if you're navigating on a website let's say that you have some frame with google had inside them that's usually the new method to display ads because it's rare today that we'll see like pop-ups opening when navigating the web because they are finding new ways to display ads and anyway whatever we're gonna do will be we'll see some ads when navigating on the web and i'm not talking about the social media frame that allows to share some web page it's just an extra information that you can see when navigating the web so because there's less pop-up window than before I'll just suggest you to remove this one because sometime if you are navigating on the website it's trying to open a legit window then you'll be blocked because the pop-up blocker will be turned on and you'll need to authorize manually each window and the other day I was 
using a credit card system to process a transaction and I lost a billing confirmation, a receipt, because the window did not open automatically. So I was unable to print the receipt and I was a bit frustrated about this. So now I'm just suggesting to turn this off. Okay, so now I'll restart. Were you done? I think so, yes. Maybe we can close Internet Explorer and reopen it and put it as the default browser. Desktop list. NVDA 5 of 7. I. Internet Explorer 6 of 7. Internet Explorer. HTTPS slash slash w search combo box editable. Blank. And we are on Google. So now I will close Internet Explorer. Desktop list. Internet Explorer. And I will open the google.ca web page through the run dialog by pressing Windows R. Run dialog type the name of www.google.ca. Text up Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge window. About blank in search combo box search. And we heard that the page was opened in Microsoft Edge, which is the new Windows 10 browser made by Microsoft. Yes, however, sometimes it's causing some issues with screen readers. So let's go ahead and put Internet Explorer as default. First, let's close Edge. Desktop list. But if you want to use it, I mean, you can. NVIDIA does support it. Just, just as also. well. Yeah, just as well. Uh, but sometimes it's causing some bugs because the support is for screen reader is beginning. And sometimes it's difficult to copy text or uh, there's a couple of issues. Again, the menu, it's not easier as the menu is in Internet Explorer. However, this is still usable. Say you want to fix your friend's computer and you have NVDA. I mean, it's usable for downloading a screen reader or doing some basic stuff but let's put internet explorer as default so to do that we will open the settings app again by pressing windows i settings settings window search box okay now we need to tab list and right System arrow one of until apps devices phone th network person app 6 of 13 enter Settings window. Tab. List. Apps and features Down one. Arrow. Of default apps not selected. Two selected of five. Selected with enter. Default apps. Tab. Email. Maps. Again. Music player. Again. Photo viewer. Again. Video player. Again. Web browser. Reset button. Whoops. Web browser. Web browser. Microsoft Edge button. Enter. Choose an app window. Tab. Internet Explorer button. And if you would have multiple web browsers installed, such as Chrome or Firefox, they would be listed here as well. So here we are going to select Internet Explorer. Enter. Pop up window. Check it out button. Now you have a warning. Say, hey, do you want to try Microsoft Edge? You you should try it. Let's press maybe tab. I Switch can, anyway link. Yeah, maybe I can uh, show you the warning using NVIDIA object navigation. Check it out button. Try Microsoft Edge before you try. Oops, no previous. Second. Try before you switch. Try Microsoft Edge. It's new. It's fast. And it's built for Windows 10. So that's the warning that we are having when trying to change the default browser for Internet Explorer instead of a hedge. Let's tab to check it out button. Switch anyway link. Switch anyway under web browser, Internet Explorer button focused. All right, so Internet Explorer is now set as the default web browser. Would you like to go ahead and Try to open Google from the run dialog. Yeah, I'll close the settings. Desktop list. Internet run dialog. Desktop Internet Explorer. HTTP slash slash right. www. Search combo box editable. You've just pressed Blank. enter because the Google address was already 
written down into right. the run dialog because it's already keep in mind or in memory the last comment you've entered there. All right, so I think we're all set for Internet Explorer. Now, maybe we can show how to go ahead and check for updates because before installing JAWS or another screen reader, I'll suggest you to go ahead and make sure your computer is up to date. Yeah, and Windows 10 updates by itself, which means you have no control or almost no control of when it's updating and yeah so we're going to return into these settings desktop settings updates settings are window. a bit hard to manage because uh sometimes you know you need to run a couple of time windows update before being able to install updates microsoft's a bit crap regarding updates yes i know so let's tab list system one of 13 and maybe you can press end because i don't know where it's on the keyboard update and security 13 of 13 yeah update and security enter then tab windows update your device is scheduled to restart outside of active hours active hours are 8 a.m to 5 colon 0 0 p.m we couldn't find a good time to install updates outside of your active hours and need you to restart your device to finish up. Search box. So the cursor, while NVIDIA was reading, the cursor was on the search box of uh, the settings app. So let's tab again. List. Windows update 1 of 10. Here we have a couple of options. I'll go through them quickly, but the one that we'll focus on is Windows update which is already selected. Windows Defender not selected 2 of 10. Windows Defender, which is the built-in antivirus. Backup not selected 3 of 10. Backup, never use that, but I it, I guess it's to back up your files. Troubleshoot not selected 4 of 10. I Troubleshoot, um, is it the... Recovery not selected oh. 5 of 10. Troubleshoot, don't know what yeah, that is. Yeah, these kind of options are especially, made, are especially made for, let's say, create system backup or restoring, or if you're having some problem, let's say, with a device, you can launch a diagnostic. So these tools are especially designed for this. I think it's not... Uh, maybe we can... Activation not selected, 6 of yeah, 10. This one is to reactivate or check the uh, status of Windows activation. Find my device not selected, 7 of 10. Uh, find my device. I never use this. I think we don't care. But For uh, developer. Uh, uh, no, a setting that's important is recovery. recovery. not selected, 5 of 10. If you want to reset your computer, you would go there and you would have the recovery options. I will return to Windows Update. Windows Update 1 of 10. It's already selected, so I'll press Tab. List. Bullet 2018-04 Security Update for Adobe Flash Player for... And now, I do have some updates available, so they are showing here. If you would not have updates available, or if Windows would not search for updates, you would have a search for updates button. So if you click that, Windows will immediately search for available updates. So here it's prompting me to restart. So all I have to do is press tab. View installed update. Restart now button. And restart now. I'll click it. Space. Secure desktop. And now the computer is restarting. And it will restart in a couple of minutes, and but you will not hear it restart. Yes, and updates will be automatically being installed. Please keep in mind that you should explore the Windows update windows each time you're going inside of it. So you'll need to explore it using tab or shift tab 
Or if you're more familiar with this, you can also use the NVDA object navigation to browse inside of it. Yeah, but I would recommend to use Windows Narrator because with the last version of Windows, the fall creator version, this is harder to navigate through the update status. So I had to use Narrator for that. I made a podcast on Narrator. If you did not listen to it, I showed you how to use it. So I would suggest you in this screen to use Narrator. The computer is already restarted and that's not normal. So Sony will hear a notification saying there was an error installing updates. I mute the computer so you'll not hear it because anyways uh, we'll not try to process updates and updates right here but I think we did a big and quick tours of all the options that you need to change in Windows 10 to make it work better with a screen reader. I don't know if there's anything else, but I think at this point we did a complete tour. Yeah, I think we've covered pretty much everything. However, there's a new update coming up soon. So there might be some things that will be different. Please keep in mind that Windows 10 upgrade each six months. So yes, this will be a major update and let's see the setting center or some settings or let's see the control panel can change so be aware of this and also when it's a major update usually these updates are provided in April and in November and when it's a major update it can take more than an hour and a half to install so if your computer is processing some update since more than an hour please do not shut it down and make sure what the computer is doing before taking an action or press control windows enter to try to turn on narrator Yes, however, even if you're not hearing some speech, it might be possible some computer, when they are updating the sound card, the internal sound card will not work. So in this particular case, the narrator should not be able to speak. And yes, it can happen, unfortunately. So in this case, maybe you can, there is many strategies you can connect USB headset or a USB sound card, small USB sound card. It's approximately the size of an USB stick with an input and an output, and then connect an external speakers. There is many way, or just use an application like Be My Eyes, like Sing AI to scan the your computer screen. The update should be available around April 17th or something like that. And it may take months before you receive it. So don't worry if you don't get it like right now. Or if you really want to be updated, there are some ways you can go ahead and force the installation of this yeah, update. I might, uh, I might force this particular kangaroo to update, so I might show it in a podcast. Yes, uh, you can use the Windows Upgrade Assistant to perform this kind of task. So I think that's ra that wraps up. Yeah, I think so. So thanks for listening to everybody. And thanks. see you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Before the end of this podcast, I would like to say you thank you for your loyalty to this series of podcasts on assistive technologies. I would also like to thank our loyal collaborator. As a reminder, I would like to inform you that Canadialog will not provide free technical support on product presented during these shows and that are not sold directly 
by Kenny Dialogue. Please note that our podcasts are now available on our website, YouTube, iTunes, as well as on Victor devices by consulting the North American English suggested podcast list from Humanware. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can contact us via email at podcastwitness at kennydialogue.com that is p-o-d-c-a-s-t-s at c-a-n-a-d-i-a-l-o-g dot com or by phone on our toll-free number at 1-888-730-0003 again 1-888-730-0003 extension 555 extension 555 I also invite you to visit our website, which contains a lot of useful information at www.kennydialogue.com. You can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thanks for listening.